How's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about wrapping programs. And that is the program that I used to create this MetaHuman, uh, this stylized guy that you see right here, and is what I'll be using to create a lot of the characters from my short film that's coming soon. The reason is because this allows me to get the MetaHuman topology into any head scan that I have even a stylized head like this one. Uh, this one was very fun to do, particularly because I actually did the whole body, but in this video, we're just going to see the head because it's it's a really long process. So that's why this is going to come into a series of videos. Now, I'm not sponsored by any of these programs. I bought everything with my own money. Hopefully you watched my Black Friday video and you took advantage of those sales. Uh, if not, then just remember to follow me on Twitter, Discord, and all that, because that's how I post um, all those things. When it comes to using these programs, unfortunately, it's not free. Best things in life aren't free. So I'm going to be using Maya because that's how Unreal decided the DNA was going to go. I'm also going to be using a program called Rap3 or Rap3D, I think it's called. Anyways, um, I'm going to be showcasing everything about that program. Now, this does require a bit of understanding of 3D art. So if you have absolutely no idea about making 3D characters or making 3D assets, this may be a little bit steep for you uh, because I'm, I'm going to go into some technical terms. I'll try to make it as beginner friendly as possible, but there's just some terms that I need to get out while um, I'm talking about the softwares because this is pretty much its character art. Now, regarding the wrapping program, well, I'm just amazed and you'll see how magic, how magical it is. I just wish that I had this when I was starting into the gaming industry and I didn't have to re apologize over and over because re apologizing a character is it's just insane. Yeah. By the way, I am not using MetaHuman Animator for this. I'm just using the regular live link um, to Unreal plugin because otherwise this this will take me a lot to do because somebody commented in in my mouth shapes not being super accurate as they used to it's because i'm i'm just doing this live and in real time so it, it is what it is just wanted to show you this guy moving and uh yeah let's get started all right so for starting let me show you where to get the software now at the time of recording there's still a uh, Black Friday going on, so I don't know if this is going to be up when you see it. I'm going to try to put it as soon as possible so you guys can take advantage of the offer if you do want to. Now, I will be using Rap3. Rap3 is this software that you see right here, and you'll see me using it throughout the whole video. However, you can apply exactly the same things that I'm going to be doing here to ZRap. ZRap is a plugin for ZBrush. If you own ZBrush, now you can actually, it used to be that ZBrush was a one-time fee perpetual license, which is what I got. Uh, but now you can do ZBrush uh, monthly and it's not so bad. So if you need to use ZBrush and you want to do this at lower cost, you can do the indie version, which as you can see right now with the Black Friday is 49.5, but it's uh, $99 an annual subscription. I'm going to show you why it's so worth it. However, if you do want to get the same software that I'm using, it's going to be Wrap 3D. And if we go all the way down here, you click on Indie, it's 570 usually. Right now, Black Friday is 285 which is the price that I pay for one year perpetual license. The reason why I like this is because it is a perpetual license. And it is its standalone thing, so I don't have to open ZBrush and, and this on top. But if you want the cheaper option and you do have ZBrush, you can go with ZRap. Try either or. If you don't have ZBrush, you can actually try this one to see if you like it. There's also a trial version, a 30-day trial version that has all the features for ZRap if you do have ZBrush and want to try it that way. Now, when it comes to the model that we're going to use, we're going to be using this free HD head scan from uh, 3D Scan Store. They are a very good source for head scans. Uh, they have very cool displacement maps that can be used if you're creating your own heads. And this is what I'm going to be using 
for my short film, not this head precisely. This one is just for demo purposes, so you guys can get it free here. And it comes with a C tool, which is super high poly, and it has a, a lots of detail. So as you can see, it has a normal map, a diffuse map, and a lot of maps that you're going to need for this to work. Now, this is the software that I was talking about, and it's actually pretty easy to use if you've never used this before. It's a node based program and just create a, a geometry node. I actually need two of these. So the way this works is one is for the mesh that I want to use, the metahuman mesh, and one is going to be for the scan mesh. Again, if you do the ZBrush part, it's probably a little bit less complicated. You just load both meshes and you're done. Now, as you can see, I just loaded a metahuman head. On this one, let's rename it to base. Now let's load the scan. There you go, the scans underneath this. I can just click on this light bulb and you can see I got the scan here. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to be wrapping the base mesh into the scan mesh. And the reason for that is because meta pipe and all the things that you need to do to customize your meta human and still use the dna and by dna i'm going to say this a lot during the tutorials by dna i mean the let's say what's under the hood of the rig that's what's going to drive your meta human so that only works if you have the same meta human topology fortunately nowadays we have this kind of programs uh, or you can do it in zbrush if you want and we can just get the metahuman topology on top of uh, the scan and to conform to it. All right. Now that we have this, we need a couple things called points. Let me see selection points. Here you go. So this is going to allow us to tell it where to go. You can also select your points in the ZBrush version. And you just enter the base on this one and you enter the scan on this one. All right, and we're gonna go to the visual editor. We're gonna sync the views and you're gonna see that it, it moves the same way. Okay, so we can just get close to it. Let's make sure that we do here on the eyes. And the program is smart enough to know, like after I click something, it'll put the same number here. So it'll just do like a one to one. Let's just do one, one, one. And I'm going to time lapse this part. All right, technically you can put as many points as you like. Let's just put one more here in the nose. And what I did is I added points to the parts where I think it's going to give me a little bit of trouble. So like the ears, the eyes, uh, the nostrils and around the mouth, around the mouth, not so much, but these parts that have a lot of numbers that are a little bit critical because I've already wrapped a couple of times and that is where you usually get a lot of distortion if you do not use these control points that's what they are for now the next thing that you usually need to do with this program and any other projection program if you've done this as a 3d artist is get rid of the mouth back and by that i mean this little thing inside here so we're also going to do a, another selection it's going to be selected polygons and we're going to plug in this one 
And for this one, we can actually do it by polygroups. I think now the MetaHuman doesn't have that many polygroups. So we could also do it by uh, actual polygons. We can just select it. You can see that uh, over here, I can just select this whole array of polygons. Although one of the things that I've seen uh, some people do is they just do a loop here. It's going to look unnecessary, but trust me, it actually works. As weird as it looks, it actually works. So I'm just going to grow this until I can get all the polygons behind it. And if I shrink it, you're going to see that I only get those polygons in the back, which is very, I find it hilarious. The program kind of knows. So there you go. That's the whole mouth back. And we can press on hide selected. Could do the same thing to the eye sockets. I haven't had any trouble with the eye sockets to be honest, but just to be safe, I, I like to do this uh, on the eye sockets as well. And again, it's it's gonna look a little bit weird, but if you just grow this whole thing and you shrink it down just like I did with the other one, it actually it shrinks down to the socket that you need, which I find that's hilarious about the software, but hey, it works. All right, so let's make sure that we are in the actual inside. There you go. So I'm gonna hide those. Okay, so after we've done this, we need to add a wrapping node. Go to alignment, wrap it, uh, wrapping. And we're gonna put one here, one here. And we're gonna do select points and polygons. So that's what's awesome about this program. The notes actually come with color um, color buttons, so you can just plug it in to where it's gonna go. Now what we need to do is click on compute. And it's gonna do its thing. It's going to start wrapping and you can instantly see how good it looks. Uh, I'm just gonna pause the video right here and I'll show you the results. Now you can see the results are out of this world. Like, look, it's actually wrapped correctly. Let me go here and take the wireframe out of both. Go back here. You can see that this looks fantastic. And it actually took me less than less than five minutes, to be honest. And this is the metahuman topology. This is how insane this program is. And again, you're going to need it for MetaPipe because up until today, you still need to use the MetaHuman topology to customize your MetaHuman. So let's say you have something sculpted and all you can do, all you're going to do is grab your MetaHuman base mesh from Maya because you are going to need Maya for this process. And then you're going to bring it over to wrap 3d or you're going to use zbrush and and then it's it's going to look like this but it, this isn't the end the other thing that i find so magical about this program is it can actually transfer the textures from one uv to the other so if we actually bring the albedo from the scan we're going to get it into the metahuman topology i'm going to show you First, we're going to, instead of load geometry, we're going to load an image and we're going to plug it into the scan. I'm going to look for set image here on textures, TGA, face, and okay, it doesn't take TGA. Okay, let's do JPEGs, face, and here it goes. There it is, the albedo. Go back to viewport. Turn off the MetaHuman one, turn this one off. You can see the albedo of this one here. Now we're going to do a node that's called transfer texture. Wait, let me do it right here so you guys can see. There you go, so transfer texture. And what you need here is source geometry, which in this case is the scan. Then you need target geometry, which in this case is the wrap. 
And we also need the excluded polygons, so that is not... I don't think this is mandatory, but I guess you need it too. Let's do a texture of 4K 496 by 496. And it actually did it. And now we actually have the albedo unwrapped as a metahuman texture. Now there are some things to fix here. This is not perfect, but these are some easy things that can be fixed in Photoshop. So again, this is what I find. So this is what I find magical about this is because I knew about other wrapping software, but before I discovered this one, which again, thanks to the guys from 3D scan store, which brought me to this program, it also transfer the textures. So if you get a scan that already has normals that already has an albedo, you don't have to texture it again. You can just transfer from one head to the other. Now over here, all we have to do is right click and save geometry. I'm going to actually save the geometry over here. All right. Now that we have our geometry out, we need to get our image out. However, one of the issues is that we have, uh, as you can see, the checkerboarding means that there is transparency if you ever work with Photoshop. So what this transparency is going to do is it's going to, I'm sorry, it's going to make us have a seam. In order to delete those seams, we need a new node called extrapolate. So extrapolate, what's going to do, it's going to fill those gaps and you're going to see what it does. So as you can see, those gaps are completely filled. We do need to fix this a bit in Photoshop, but other than that, just for this quick tutorial, you're going to see how it works. Now, what we're going to do is right click, save image. We're going to save this image right here. And just to show you, because if I go into the shaded mode, they're kind of look the same. But if I go into the textures and I add the same texture this one has, which is material one, it's going to look very funky and very weird because the UVs are not the same. It's different kind of UVs because it's using the metahuman topology. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to its initial uh, shading. We're going to open an image. This is the image that we just exported with that program. And there you go. It fits. It actually fits very, very nice. And right now I don't have any roughness. I don't have anything else. It's just the albedo. That's why we don't have the shininess that we have right here. Now this is running in the preview mode. It's not running in the full rendering mode. So that's why we have the you know, weird metallic eyes and the weird shininess here. But just to show you, the principle of all of this is that you can get not only the geometry, but also you can get the texture. 